Hi teens, my name is Ashley. I'm from Imagine If Libraries and this is a Teen Eats cooking tutorial, which is a part of a video series where I give a book, movie, or TV show recommendation and then I cook something inspired by that recommendation. So I previously recommended books like A Children of Blood and Bone and A Bad Beginning. I recommended TV series like Avatar The Last Airbender and I recommended other media types like Lumberjanes, which is a comic book series and the subgenre of food anime. But today I want to cover my favorite animated television show of all time, which is Adventure Time. But there is a reason why I want to cover Adventure Time today because on the 25th, HBO is going to release an Adventure Time special. And the special is all about my favorite character that has ever been created, and that is Bimo. So the first special, HBO is going to release a couple specials. The first special is all about Bimo. I'm really excited to watch the special. So I thought today we would discuss Adventure Time, but we would also discuss a recipe from a really iconic episode of Adventure Time, which is Jake's best sandwich. Um, we are going to make our own best sandwich and we're going to make our own bread. We're going to discuss ingredients and textures. So the bread is going to take the longest to cook. So let's get started on the bread making process. So we are taking inspiration today from Jake's most delicious sandwich in Adventure Time when he makes his the most delicious sandwich. Jake calls upon the gods to receive creative inspiration and he selects each ingredient for taste and perfection. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make our own bread today, but we've never baked together and baking is much different than cooking. With cooking, you can sort of just estimate what you want to go into your food, but with baking, everything needs to be really precise. Uh, today we are cooking my favorite bread. I'm not a big bread person, but I really like this bread because it's the one bread that my grandmother cooked for every family meal when I was growing up. I'm going to show you the recipe for this bread, but like we'll be able to see it's more like it's going to be more like cooking than baking. I'll just show you. I'll show you what this recipe looks like. Here is my Nana's recipe. So I assume she both created and typed up this recipe sometime in the early 70s. This was from a typewriter. She lists a couple ingredients, but her first step here is make sponge. She doesn't list the steps on how to make a sponge, just make the sponge. So I am going to just sort of assume her instructions. We're going to do our best here and hopefully our bread turns out how we want it to. So I'm getting started on my sponge for our bread. The sponge method is one of three ways to make bread. A sponge is just a fermented base for bread. So it's sort of like sourdough, but um, we're using yeast instead of a starter here. So in this bowl, I have all our water, which is a, a cup and a half of water. I have two tablespoons sugar. You want to use something that's been refined for this. You don't want to use like coconut sugar, otherwise our yeast won't um, eat the sugar. So I've never used this um, instant yeast before, but we're going to see, we're going to just see how it turns out. So in here, water, sugar, I'm adding my yeast and then I'll add half the flour and mix until incorporated. I need about two packets here. I have my whisk attachment on my mixing, my stand mixer, because we are not beating our bread yet. We're just mixing all the ingredients together. I'm going on a really low speed here, and then I'm going to add the flour. So I have my bowl here. I put in 
not quite a tablespoon of oil of this. Baking needs to be really precise. So I put precisely three cups of flour in my bowl. Normally when you are cooking or when you're baking with yeast, you would need to let the yeast activate. But this yeast has already been activated. So I am just going to take this sponge. I'll show you what it looks like. This sponge. I'm going to turn it out into my oiled bowl. And like my Nana, I am going to cover it with a towel. And I'm going to put it on the open door of my oven. Now, a sponge, what makes it a sponge is fermenting that dough, like I said. We are going to let the sponge ferment on the oven door at 200 degrees for about an hour. This is what our sponge looks like right now. It should double in size. We'll probably get two loaves of bread from this. So it's been rising in here for about 20 minutes. It has filled my bowl. I'm not sure if I picked a big enough bowl here. I'm going to punch it down. I forgot to mention that you have to punch it down. Release some of that air. It's a really, really sticky. Hopefully this creates more elas elasticity in our bread. We're going to let it rise for another 30 minutes. My sponge has finished rising. In this mixing bowl, I've already combined three more cups of flour, a tablespoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, a cup of yogurt, and two tablespoons of room temperature butter. So they're all mixed up in there. I'm going to add my starter to this bowl. And then with the bread hook, I'm going to beat it all together. It's really sticky. I'm hoping that even though I used different ingredients I've, I've never used before, like the already activated yeast, that my bread doesn't collapse in the oven. We're just going to see, and I hope it turns out okay. I'm now just beating it all together. We're going to beat for probably 10 minutes until it's all mixed together and totally incorporated and we're developing the gluten inside the bread. I have buttered three ramekins. I'm going to divide my dough amongst them. If your dough is too sticky, add a little bit more flour. That's what I have to do. I'm gonna divide my dough amongst these three ramekins. And then after I'm done dividing it, I am going to put this egg wash on top and I'm going to bake it for probably 15 minutes. Let's see how these turn out. Our breads came out of the oven. Look at that. I was hoping it didn't fall in and it didn't. They look perfect. The next thing we're going to cook is tomato soup. So I was thinking when we made the best sandwich ever that we would have to make something that paired with the best sandwich ever. And my favorite type of soup, which generally goes with sandwiches, right? Like soup and sandwiches, is tomato soup. So this is sheet pan tomato soup. Essentially, I have almost three pounds of tomatoes here. I have a couple of shallots, a cut open head of garlic, a couple sprigs of thyme, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper. I just massaged everything together. I'm going to put it in the oven for about 30 minutes at the same temperature as the bread. I've pulled my veggies from the oven. Here are what they look like. I also turned down my oven, it was at 400, now it's at 350 because we are going to cook some bacon. And the reason why we're cooking bacon is because we're drawing inspiration from Jake's most delicious sandwich and his sandwich is going to be a little bit different from our sandwich because his sandwich had a lot of silly things in it. Like he cooked a steak sous vide, which is just a steak in a plastic bag in boiling hot water. He also plucked a bird from his windowsill, which then he 
cooked and he also had the soul of a lobster in his sandwich. But when I think of the most delicious sandwich, I think of BLT. So we're going to cook this bacon on some tin foil, 350 for 20 minutes, flipping halfway through. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about texture and we're going to puree our soup. Here is my soup. I took it off the heat. I started pureeing it with my immersion blender here, which is just a handheld blender. This is the only recipe I have today that relies on a technology that maybe not everyone has. If you don't have a handheld blender, you would have to use a regular blender. But we did make bread today. We made it with a stand mixer, but you could totally make bread with your hands without any other kitchen technology. I'm just going to blend this soup up on low. It will become totally blended up and smooth. I also added a splash of cream and then we'll be ready to make our sandwich. We have been on a journey today. We baked bread, we made soup, we baked bacon. Our bread came out really well. It's been so long since I made bread that I think it came out as it should have split a little on the side, but that's okay. My soup came out really, really good. I've already eaten a bowl of it. I think the extra addition of balsamic vinegar this time kicked it up a notch. Last time I didn't add bals balsamic vinegar. So why don't we slice open this bread, compile our BLT, which I think is the best sandwich, and talk one, I have one more talking point this video. Let's talk about texture. Here is the slice of bread. Texture is really everything for me and a lot of people. Texture is really important. Like the texture of this bread. It has a really specific crumb pattern here. Texture determines sometimes whether or not we like a food. Like I know people who don't like mashed potatoes because the texture is strange to them. But a couple years back, I received this magazine in the mail. It's all about how to build a better sandwich. And one of the... Um, columns within this How to Build a Better Sandwich magazine was about sogginess. This Bon Appetit magazine said that sogginess is not something to avoid, but if it if your sandwich does result in sogginess, then that's, that's good. That's okay. Because sogginess is its own texture and it should be enjoyed for what it is. So sogginess is not a feeling of the sandwich's fault but it's just part of the sandwich, which I agree with. I think sometimes we don't think enough about texture and how it determines what we like. For instance, Americans like, I, I saw it once in um, Ugly Delicious. It, the host said that Americans love crunchy foods and they love creamy foods but they don't think enough about foods that aren't within the American culinary experience as far as texture goes. Like um, a lot of Asian cultures really like chewiness and softness that is not creamy. This sandwich, I'm going to consider this my favorite sandwich. Like BLTs are my favorite sandwich. The texture of the sandwich is really specific, but it could also be, I mean, changed depending on what elements we put within the sandwich. So I am going to finish my BLT slathers of mayonnaise, and I have some arugula here. And once it's all ready to go, like crispy bacon, 
I am going to watch the show that inspired me to make this sandwich in the first place, which is Adventure Time. Thanks everyone for following me on this journey today. It was such a journey, but I think this payoff, like look at the sandwich. It's going to be so, so good. I will see everyone next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.